Hello, I'm your host Denise Rojas and we have been working on a lot of solar projects and also these Stirling engines. This Stirling engine is really just a toy. Dan's been working on the larger Stirling engine. Let's see what type of progress he's been making. What I've done is I've removed the cover for this, uh, one of the pistons of the, the compressor. And here's the gasket. You want to try not to damage these. If you ever want to turn this back into a compressor, you're going to have a hard time doing it if you damage things. These are the flap valves. Basically, this is all that they do. They sit in place and they flap open and closed. And this is what allows the pressure to go in one direction. If you're going to be using this, uh, an engine like this, uh, for a steam engine, or you're going to be using this piston for a Stirling engine, you take that off. And for a steam engine, you can just use this here. The underneath part on this has one as well. I'm going to, I don't know if you can see that, but it has the same thing going on under here. Now, the reason that I'm showing you this, I'm not really close to this engine. I had a little success with it just heating the one piston, but it was not nearly uh, enough power for the amount of heat that we needed. So, what I've done is come up with a few different concepts with this. Uh, possibly taking a can like this and attaching it to the piston. And what we're going to do is we're going to jacket this with a piece of pipe like this. So what's going to happen if you looked into the interior, I'm going to use this glass cylinder as an example for it. When the piston goes down, you're going to basically have this effect going on. Your displacer piston is going to be over here. Now, there's going to be a little bit of space, depending on the size of can that you use, around the outer portion of this piston. The closer you can get it, the better, um, because you're going to have less air. Your casing out here should be a little bit larger than what this is. I'm going to discontinue the top on this side of this, and we may even discontinue it on the other side over there, just in case there's too much air volume inside of the pistons. So we're just basically using the timing, the timing that's naturally on a compressor like this. And what would happen with a can in here is the can would come down, the air, in theory, what should happen is the air should expand, and when you get this going, it would push the piston down. Now, some of the hot expanded air is going to go down in here and wrap, come around, it's going to get cooled by this piston here, which is not a bad thing because Stirling engines like this one uh, that has have the power piston on the back side, the air cools in this big uh, block right here, but it also is cooled by these fins right here. So these fins in this portion would be equal to these fins on the hot side because any air that would come down there initially would be cooled. If you have machining skills and you have one of these compressors, by all means go ahead and give it a shot and see what you come up with. I was thinking about uh, uh, putting a tap and die this, putting threads there, and basically just screwing a can into place like that. You would want something probably close to this size. So when this goes down, you would have, this would be capped down there. So you would have something like that going on inside of there. This one's getting stuck because it's threaded, so of course you wouldn't want to use this. This is also too thick. So a can is a lot closer to what we're looking for. This one's too tall. So back to the citrus can, and that's pretty much what we're going to have. Now you don't want all the space up top. This is just to show you this bottom part. What we would need to do, if we used to say we used a steel pipe like this for our casing, we would need to drill a small hole in the side and have the regenerator or the transfer tube come and attach to that versus this whole setup here and then it would go over to the other side. So what would happen? The hot air would expand, it's heated, come down here, it would come down, start to get cooled a little bit here, simultaneously it would be drawn into the other piston to the other side, go through the regenerator, heat this up as 
the air condenses, come back, boom, the air shoved back around here and the cycle would start all over again. I showed you how well this cylinder right here, the compre I mean this, you can see it, like, watch what it does to my hand when I draw it in. That's just trying to squeeze the crap out. Ah. <laughs> Look at that ring. Find a nice clean spot that's not torn. So you can see the incredible suction that that's got. Got a nice parabolic shape or nice curved shape there. So if you do it really fast, like this. It'll actually pop it. Mm. If you do it really fast like this, it'll actually pop it. You can see a little hole right through it. In regards to that small Sterling engine that I showed you with the uh, glass displacer piston, this is what I'm thinking. This is a borosilicate glass container that I was able to get. I found these for a pretty decent price. They're kind of expensive. They're about $35 a piece. But this particular glass can handle really high heat. So it won't, it doesn't shock very easily. And it's different than the tea container. So if you break this, you won't get a certain somebody mad at you. But um, you can see that these could be used for that if we had the steel wool at the the end, this is just a scaled up version of that. So, somebody sent me a video of this concept actually in action on a small scale that somebody made. I'm your host, Denise Rojas. Thank you for watching and enjoy your videos.